Hello and welcome to the Nebula, where me and some of my friends discuss a variety of topics involving everything from video games, anime, random junk, you name it. Sit down, get comfy, and uh, enjoy the show. Today, today we have uh, M with us. Hello. There's uh, Mithridates from the uh, last stream. Welcome to the dark side of the YouTube. <laughs> uh, we've got <laughs> Teo, this time joining us by call. Teo? <laughs> okay, he might be dead again. Um, we've got Terry TV with us, like last time. Hello, I am TATV, also known as MK, also known as the internet's second busiest music nerd. And we have a longtime friend of mine. Can you introduce yourself? What's up, guys? Fan to be here, and I'm I'm joining this this podcast right now with with, uh, with all of you guys. Yeah. So, considering the fact oh. of how well last episode went, where you know we were we kind of had a list of topics and we didn't really know what the hell we were doing. <laughs> um, this yeah, time we, we, we have kind of we, to... when we know what we are doing anyway. We, we we kind of we kind of have a better idea this time of what we want to do, and so yeah, we... but that 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 doesn't mean we know what we're doing yet. <laughs> We, we don't quite know what we're doing yet. This is going to be kind of an experimental episode. We, where we just kind of we have a, we have a few topics that we're definitely going to talk about. The first thing the first thing on our list of main stuff to talk about is well, uh, for those a new you, microphone. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, we're using a new microphone this time. At least. A brand new microphone. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, that's a secret sixth member of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, apparently Wi-Fi issues or something. Um. But yeah, so as I was saying... I mean, last time I was basically a you secret you member. You did it, yeah. steal it. <laughs> Panem is the seventh, or the sixth secret member. He, he's the missing sixth one. Alright, but anyways, so the first thing, the first topic we have is actually Emma's introduction to the channel, which was uploaded uh, just last Thursday. I'm not sure if everyone here has actually even seen it. <laughs> I know MK has. Um, so for those of you guys who, weren't, who didn't watch last episode, uh, I actually run a group we call we call ourselves Shrek Forward, and effectively, um, we are we are a text-based role-play group, and one of our most known, well-known characters is Emma. Um, he's he's also the current PFP and the guy you guys are currently seeing on screen. Um, but we're credited by uh, Tomato, and um, yeah, so yeah, welcome to the new mascot, I guess. The next thing on today's list is the uh, upcoming Thoughts Upon a Star episode, which is the other series I plan on having be a mainstay here on this channel. The first episode has officially been decided, and it will actually be on the game we were playing just last time. Mousy Blood, actress again, current code. Uh, please keep an eye on that, and without further ado, we could finally get through to the actual conversation part. The uh, first part being the Blaster Master Zero series, which we're, we're going to talk about in honor of the third game's release. So, um, yeah. So I guess the first thing to ask is, uh, do you, any of you guys actually even know what Blaster Master Zero is, or am I the only one here? Uh, I'm uh, sort of aware of what Blaster Master is. Yeah. I um, have no idea. I've never heard it before. Yeah, same here. I, I've only heard about it from uh, from you, Star Child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for those of you who are unaware, like, you know, obviously anybody but me here, sadly, um... Blaster Master Zero <laughs> is a reboot of a game that originally released on NES called Blaster Master, which is like a whole long-running series, yada yada. Yeah, my movie's watching. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> sorry, my uh, my there's sister. A, there's a song lyric here. What? Yeah, my movie's watching. Uh, sorry, my uh, sister is apparently joining us. Apparently. Yeah. I'm in the middle of recording a podcast. <laughs> 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 See ya. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Um. Anyways. Uh. Yeah. So Blaster Master Zero is originally released on 3DS, and it's actually by Integrates, who you guys might know from Azure Striker Gunvolt fame, or more infamously, a certain little game by the name of Mighty Number no. 9. Yeah, the, the, the uh, same people. Or maybe not the same exact game. Same company. Uh, Blaster Master Zero is a Metroidvania style game, and it began on 3DS. Or, I like Metroid. Yeah. Uh, it began on 3DS, and, and it. Let's just say from the moment I began playing it, it stole my heart. I, I originally started with a demo of the first game, fell in love with it, and then uh, got it again when it came to Switch. And, or when I guess more clearly when I got my Switch because it already released. 
Um, and the third game just released, like, I think just earlier, like, just, like, about a week or two ago now. <laughs> I don't have it yet because, well, I'm still working on the second game because I'm kind of slow at these. But, yeah, Le Liam here, or, you know, Teo, he can tell, you can tell you guys all about how much I freaking love NT Creates Azure Striker Gunvolt games. I mean, I've got my own reasons to, um... Really think of Indicate as a. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Curse of the Moon. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, Cur Curse of the Moon is also really, really good for those who haven't tried it. I, I have it on PC, and man, is it fun. I normally suck at yes. Castlevania style games, but I, I'm actually surprisingly good at uh, Curse of the Moon, sort of. Um, but, yeah, so the reason why I bring up Last Master Zero 3, obviously, you know, it's it's celebrating its third game, which I believe is actually the final one in the series. Watch me be wrong like, in like two years' time. Um, <laughs> I don't think. Oh, oh, Panda might actually join us. We might have a new channel. Oh, that's hey. Hey. Okay, yeah. Don't don't mind the content this quick. <laughs> we're we're trying we're trying to uh. Find yeah, I, I need to get it on the fun too. What's <laughs> <laughs> just adding him. So Me too. Let's <laughs> open <opening> him <in> too. <laughs> uh, it's true, ladies. Oh boy! I like how good well, what's I'm gonna say. <laughs> We're just flagging down our sixth member. Come on, Panda, join. We're hunting them down. <laughs> we really are. Hunt them down. <laughs> Don't you guys with Wi Fi? Alright, but yeah, so. Another reason I wanted to bring up Blaster Master is because, well, it is kind of slightly tied to one of my personal favorite games of all time um, Azure Strike or Gunvolt. Okay, well, specifically the second game. Because in both the first and second games, they had uh, like crossover tie in stuff in the form of DLC. Oh, darn. Mm. Okay, yeah, so Panda may not join us because it seems like he's not going too good again. Um, oh, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine if he doesn't show up. He's at least here in spirit. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's here spiritually. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be dead more, more than uh, not, more than two ways. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are not safe as that. Ah, uh, no, great. Yeah. Here we go get the Zion. You are huh? no, you, you are, you are not safe as that. You know that, right? I like how, I like how. Um... I don't think, I don't think any of us are safe because Star now has characters that can kill me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I introduced a few new characters and, uh, <laughs> and, I, can, oh, and I can kill him anytime I want. Like, don't you dare, it? Rob? Yeah. Want but, me what? to do it? Don't, don't challenge me. <laughs> Rob doesn't have a character to kill me, however, Star does. <laughs> I have two now. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, hey, 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 Tia, you want to know the worst part? You want to know yeah. what the worst part is? Technically, yeah. they were a collab character. Ah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, all right, so, getting back on topic, um, yeah, so again, so the thing with uh, Blaster Master is, and another reason why I wanted to talk about it, is actually because another anti create game, or sorry, anti creates sorry, uh, game is um, is going to be coming out next year, which I know one person in here knows about it, and that is Astro Striker Gunvolt Three. So, you know, I wanted to shine a little spotlight on anti creates before we move forward, because you know they're they're companies that we would definitely be coming back to in a later episode of both this and Thoughts Upon the Star. <sighs> And now to get to the heavier stuff. So I wanted to bring this up as quite a few of us here are really, really big fans of a certain little um, Newgrounds game called Friday Night Funkin'. Oh, heck yeah. Mm. Uh, you all know where this is going. Go. Yeah, me, yeah, me too, me, me too, Bart. Uh, this <laughs> is Heavy Hearts and Annoyance at Twitter, but I bring up the latest mod struggles. You know, between the Midnight yeah. Masses mod and the Versus Woody mod, and you know, I 
you know, I'm going to let, obviously, MK talk a little bit about Friday Night Funkin, because again, you know, he is, uh, well, you know. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I I wouldn't call myself a master I have, and I haven't actually downloaded a single well, Friday no, Night Funkin. You're, you're like the music guy here, so. Oh uh, yeah, so Friday Night Funkin has had some drama even before this. With like, pretty sure there was like two other mod, smaller mod creators that turned out to be not the best people. Uh, let, let's just let's just say they like people of boyfriend stature, but not but not his maturity. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. with, I think, what was that? The, what, that was the uh, the Agati mod, the a guy on the internet mod, I believe, right? Was when that uh, no, and that was, like, that was, like, another mod with, like, pretty sure it's just, like, reskin of the first three mod, actually, that threw Boyfriend on Ray's back. Oh, I didn't even hear about that. The ones I heard about was, uh, like, I, I don't, yeah, I that, don't that's even, what I, was I don't even know I'm why about... the Midfight Masses mod was, like, just deleted. I think it was because the uh, people that made that mod were actually getting death threats over the charting of all things. See, see, um, that, that, that's, that's what frustrates me, because I'm actually a really, really big Rhythm game fan, you know, like, I, I mean, you know, I know I, I rave about, you know, the, the anti creates games, and, you know, like, my, my Tales of games, as you guys might, as some, some of the people in here know, I'm a, I'm a giant RPG fan, you know, like, Persona, Tales of, Bravely Default, you know, but I also really, really, I have a really large passion for Rhythm games. You know, like Taiko no Tatsujin, Os, um, Friday Night Funkin', you know. And I actually yeah. went and tried Mid-Fight Masses, you know, because there's, like there's like a few websites, you know, where you can just play the games, you know, without download anything. And I actually tried it, you know, just on a whim. It's actually not that bad, at least not in my opinion. I mean, I've tried way worse. I mean, to yeah. be fair, I'm also a Osu Mania player, you know. I don't, I don't actually play regular Os, so I'm just kind of used to it, but... I was able to beat the entire mod on my first go, so, no, second go, sorry, I forgot that Rove actually killed me at one point, but, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most people are actually angry about, like, the note charting in Wolf's song. Because yeah, of, like, this was actually... the most fun, it was actually a genuine challenge, and I'm really, really sad to see both Witty and Rove go, because they were, like, two... I, I never actually so... got to really play the Witty mod before its deletion, you know, apparently, but, um... But, you know, it's like, yeah. see, seeing these mods get deleted actually honestly really, really upsets me just because, well, it's like, this is the fan's passion. First, this, you know, it just... yeah, first, first it was versus Sky, yeah. then it was versus Ray, now it's Mid-Fight Masters. And Who's apparently, next? I believe it is um, either Tricky or Tavi who is next. How did we get to yeah, it's, we're I mean, Tavi has said... An online one, no less. Like, not to say, I play this it's, game and it, I think it's great, but... It's fucking free-to-play is mean, the worst part. Like, why? It's free-to-play. If you don't like it, you don't have to play it. There's nothing to cancel. This I is, mean, just This saying, is exactly you know? why, you know, I don't... It, it just proves how some games can have worse communities than you can expect. Yeah. Like, like, this is worse than Final Fantasy Freddy community or even the Fortnite one. Yeah, this, I'm yeah. pretty sure the Tabby mod has actually had controversy in yeah, the I'm past because people fought it. Yeah, see, this is why, you know, it, like, it's, it's why an open it, secret, you know, that, you know, I, I've owned a previous, or I've owned, like, you know, a few previous channels here on YouTube, you know, I just did for fun as a little kid, you know. But one of the videos that I refuse to take down, no matter what it does to me or my reputation, is my anti cancel culture one, that, where I'm basically just ranting about. You know, the whole thing, you know, they were trying to put jeans or whatever or something like that on uh, one of the Persona 5 Royal characters that was introduced. It's like, if Wait, if something bugs you, chance? yeah, uh, basically, um, uh, what's your name? Risque, yeah, it's, um, for those of you guys who don't know, back when Persona 5 Royal was, was you know, still on its way, uh, I forget her name, um, but she was a new character, you know, the new redhead that was introduced in that game. And uh, she has a very interesting outfit, you know, because she's like a gymnast, all that, so she has like a leotard kind of thing going on. And people are getting up in arms about her freaking leg show. It's like, come on! Like, I think, I, yeah, I think people, yeah, people it's get like, worried about like the leg show. You know, it's it's show. a gymnast theme, yeah. is what they were going with, kind of, like a, a bandit well, gymnast. That, and it's rated T, yeah. you know, you think yeah. you have And not only that, but um, uh, there, there is much worse stuff. There is much worse stuff in Persona. I mean, don't even get me started about Mara, you know. 
Apparently, with your oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that thing, yeah. Yeah, oh, that, that, the thing. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to say what it looks yeah. like, but uh, you all know what I'm talking about. But it's a, really, it's, really it's a mushroom. Enemy that is very yeah, I'm pretty sure you yes, don't have one. to even know what Persona yes. is we'll from enemy, seeing by the way. You can actually Aura. In fact, it's in Striker's Yeah. I am not looking forward to it. I, I, th I think it's just in Shin Megami Tensei, just in general, and then it, 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 it came to Persona. I, I yeah, and that's know. that like light controversy compared to what's happening right now. Yeah. But yeah, it's just it. I I stand by what I, I said I, in my I, video. Where I mean, I actually haven't watched my video, also maybe some stuff might have changed. But I stand my I stand. I, I, my point still remains that cancel culture is something incredibly dumb something incredibly and just you know, I, I still would say it's cringe as all hell, pretty much, and I, I just can't stand it, and, you know, it's like, especially whenever it's just done again, yeah. where you can you can ignore it, you can, you don't have to buy the game, as a matter of fact, it's just, and if it's mm. free you don't have to play it and plus again, this is also on Newgrounds, yeah. keep that in mind, the, the original Friday and Funkin' is a game that started on Newgrounds of all places Newgrounds is not known for pulling its punches, okay, it has some um, very interesting stuff in its history, uh, yeah, I, I, it's I mean, not, um, boy, contributors. I mean, let's take a look at the dialogue of week seven in the base game when Piku comes in. It's just, I mean, it's Tank Man it's literally. It's stupid as all. It's Tank stupid Man. as all hell about this is happening. I mean, for some yeah. mods, I get it, okay? You know, like, obviously, again, you know, the ones that involve uh, more predatory stuff in nature. Yeah, those, those I have a problem with. But just over, over small stuff like charting, like, come on. Just, just come on. There's no, there's no need to get up in arms about freaking sharding. Just, you know. Yeah, that, that's what, that's another thing that happened with the tabby mod because that keep, you know, got controversy because people thought that they stole assets from the ray mod, or because the poses looked similar, and that apparently got a lot of controversy, but it just kind of washed out, and the tabby mod's still available today. Thank God. Yeah, thank God for that. Um, you know, and that, that's part of the reason why you know again that you know I'm. I have a lot of concerns about, you know, stuff that I want to do, you know, but that is part of the reason why I decided not to become a game developer, because you can ask either M, who's here with me, or, you know, obviously Teo here, who's on the call, or hell, I think even Phantom knows that up until about earlier this year, my big dream that I've, I had for a very, very long time was to become an indie game developer, you know, I was inspired by anti creators yeah. you know, which is why, you know, I adore them so much on this channel. And I decided against that out of fear that, you know, I'd get into this kind of this kind of stuff, you know, where it, it's just... Cancel culture and copyrights. Yeah. That's the reason why I decided to go mm. with the route of just becoming a writer and currently... I feel let me speak for a moment. As an artist, I definitely understand copyright. I do fan art and stuff, and, like, there are definitely a lot of rules involved with that. Especially, and I'm sure, Cooper, you can say with Nintendo. Yeah. Like, you just... Don't mess with Nintendo <laughs> at all. Yeah, it's where Nintendo has a giant hammer and they're not, they're not afraid no to matter, hit you with it. No matter where, no matter who, no matter whenever, Nintendo will always come to fight to beat your ass because copyright, is, because copyright reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't even have to like, be fan art. They, they are good making games, but they are just shit against their fans. And that's oh, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. AM2R. Nintendo that, that, that Corporate. Did that game ring a bell at all? Stick in the mud. But, but it has been always a thing. Nintendo has been always some shit with, it, with, art, with artists, with fans. Yeah. AM2R like, ring a bell, when all, anybody? When they, when they shut down all these Pokemon fan oh, games uh, while, uh, while yeah. ago, yeah. I was like, come on. Could, could they don't yeah, win. I loved they, that game. Yeah, it got shut down like... like like less if than they a day were, after if it was they, put up, but that's, if they, that's if they, remember. I played it. Well, yeah, because other people were able to re-upload it by then. <laughs> so if they kind of got played won, pretty much. But the funny thing is that they didn't want get one money over anymore, it. Because, oh, yeah, they did actually. They, oh, they did. They, they wound up. Yeah. Then, the funny thing about AM two R is that after they like literally like I think it was like a few months after they they they, they DMCA AM two R, they then announced their own Metroid two remake. <laughs> Wow. So I'm like, was that planned? No, but what? And then it's also the deals with. with... Well, no, I, I, I'm. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just, was the was the Metroid remake, which is the was their Metroid Two me Metroid Two <laughs> remake planned ahead of time, or did they plan it around the M2R thing? Imagine a multi-million-dollar company 
being scared that they're going to lose profits from some indie developer on the internet. Not even an indie developer, uh, a freaking And then this also the deal. person. But yes. imagine being scared so, by a so, fan game so that, as a multi-dollar so that, company. Yeah. Sounds like Nintendo, right? And it's yeah, also the that, deal that, with that's Project for you. M. I mean, in all honesty, if if they ever bring back some form of Nintendo Creators program, I'm hopping on that in an instant because I genuinely want to do Nintendo content. You know, like, for example, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is, like, one of my favorite games of all time. You know, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I literally have a jacket from that game. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's just, I'm scared to do Nintendo content on here. You know, or at least, you know, to show footage and stuff, but it's just, like... I don't want to get sued off my ass. I don't have any money to begin with. You know, it's just ah. Oh god, panda. And it's panda, panda is apparently going to quote making me rage soon. We'll, we'll we'll see about that later. All right, so we're going to move on from you know the midnight mid or the, the the Friday night funk and mod troubles thing, just because well you know I don't want to get us too heated. So we're actually going to try something new this time, which is a question prompt. Which is, this is actually a prop that I'm also going to be doing eventually in Thoughts Upon a Star, Ooh. which is, can a remake entirely replace the original? Basically, if you remake a game from the ground up, not a port, you know, this is... This... Okay, so I, should, I guess I should really quick, quickly clarify. A remake versus a port, right? So, a remake <coughs> being, say, you know, just like the aforementioned Metro 2 remake, or... Um, what's the Demon Souls. Yeah, Demon Souls, you know, for example. Or even, or obviously, like, you know, Blaster Master Zero. You know, that's actually how I came up with this one, is, again, like, Blaster Master Zero versus the original Blaster Master in the mind. Or Metroid versus Metroid Zero Mission, you know. Uh, I mean, because, like, Pokemon... Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. Account. Zero Mission. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 the, yeah the, the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or something like that. So the question, yeah, like, the question here is, red. since um, M didn't actually hear it, is can a remake of a video game... Outright, completely, 100% replace the original, basically. You know, could it, could, could it make the original so obsolete there is no point in playing it? Um, I mean, I guess it depends on what game it is. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Depends how it's made in the, in the yeah. context. But yeah. I collect yeah. vintage also, games. Also, I, I, I feel like, um... Like, if you take some, some parts of the game just for the sake of it... Yeah. Because you have the nostalgia, like Wii Sports. Yeah, because I was, I was... Or even... I think of the Wii stuff, which isn't really ported necessarily. But I get it on my computer because I already own the game, and so I did downloaded a copy of it. And honestly, it's just never the same as playing on the original hardware, because I grew up with that as a kid, and when you grew up with that, you remember the feel of the controller, the type of TV you had. Heck, you were playing um, on a CRT monitor, it was... Mm -hmm. I, I still Sega Genesis? Yeah, I still own a CRT with a Sega Genesis, and honestly, after finally getting to play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the original hardware with an original TV and a special to Genesis controller, it's kind of hard to play it on anything it's else. Hard to play. <laughs> That's the thing, is it's the reason why I brought yeah. this up is for this kind of discussion, because, you know, like, one of the games, one of the other games I actually wanted to bring up for this, which we actually spoke about, you know, just, or that, you know, Liam and I just mentioned just not too long ago, is um metroid you know with metroid between you know the first metroid and metroid zero mission you know because for those of y'all who don't know i've actually i've actually appeared in some of the geek critiques streams you know or, i mean you know just as one of his guests or not you know like not like a special guest or anything you know just one of the people watching it and fighting him at smash but i've always been a really really big fan of the geek critique you know he's the one who actually inspired my thoughts upon the star series you know it's actually based on his stuff um but basically, he actually had a whole episode, he did two whole episodes on both the original Metroid and Zero Mission. And, you know, as someone who actually got into Metroid via Zero Mission, it was actually really, really interesting to see his perspective. And he actually uses a word called superannuated to describe the original Metroid. For those of you guys who don't know, superannuated basically means obsolete, you know, antiquated almost, you know. It, it's, been, it's been outdone in the same way, but by... But better, you know, like, for example, you know, um, what's, what's a good example? It's like the difference between, we'll say, here, we'll, we'll use graphics here, for, for just for a quick comparison. It's like the difference between Ocarina of Time and Ocarina of Time 3D, you know, where the graphics are good, or, you know, they, they could be good or bad, you know, but I'm going to use Ocarina of Time here because, you know, that's a game everybody knows. You know, the, the graphics Ocarina of Time original, you know, on the N64 are good, right? 
but they've been improved, they've been improved. on the oh. 3DS. Or another way to put it is the controls of Smash Bros, where you might say the con- the controls of, say, the original one on N64, or how even Melee's controls, to be honest, or at times, let's face it, have been, you know, upgraded, improved in each subsequent release. Except for looking at you, bro. Please get better. <laughs> um, and also with the Joy Cons on yeah. Switch. Honestly, though, some might say uh. the Joy Cons are a step back, depending on who you ask. Uh, being formerly a part of the competitive Smash Bros. community, actually, a lot of people actually dislike using Joy Cons, apparently. At least in my group. Um, there's actually only like a few people who don't prefer the Pro Controllers, but. That's... I'm only mad at the Joy Cons because it'll never be the same as a Wii Mode. And having four at a time instead of having to have someone else have another Switch. I'm still just annoyed about Drift because I'm, my, my Joy Cons are already beginning to drift again. Um, Joy Con Drift will be covered in a, in a future mm-hmm. episode, by the way. But anyways... Yeah. Yes, I have that as well. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm, like, getting it really, really bad at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, my yeah, you're not the only one. But yeah, but the reason why I asked this, or part of the reason why I wanted to ask this, is actually because, well... So... Actually, I don't think I've really talked about it here yet on this channel, but I think I did actually on my previous channel, where I am a very, very, very massive fan of Harvest Moon. Er, sorry, Story of Seasons. No, that to me made Harvest Moons get screwed up. I care. I don't really care for those, <laughs> except for maybe Lost Valley, just because that Minecraft element was kind of fun. But you know, you can actually, if you look back, I've actually kept up almost all of my old videos on my previous channel. I mean, I plan on defeating or deleting a few of the older ones. Cause... <laughs> Uh, just because, you know, again, I oh, sorry about the dogs, by the way. Um, uh, are those uh, are those new guests? Well, ghosts. <laughs> yeah, they, they've been here. Oh, so, um, so have a right. So yeah. have a right. But anyways, so as I was saying, I've been a very, very big fan of Harvest Moon ever since I was little. And so, you know, it became Story of Seasons, right? Well, a few years ago, no, sorry, last year, actually, they released uh, Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town, which is a remake of a beloved game of mine, Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's like, eh, it's not like the original yada yada, you know, or it's like, there's a, there's a lot of pushback on either way between, you know, is it better or worse than its original? And I've noticed that seems to go a lot for other remakes, you know, most notably, you know, uh, let's see, let's think of some. Obviously, there's, um, oh, give me a second, my, my brain just kind of blinked out. One of, the, one of the other remakes that I've I've played a lot of recently, other than you know, Blast Master Zero, Friends of Mineral Town, is a little game some might know as The Road Ends With You. And I was thinking about this actually a lot lately because um, I've been playing, a, I've been emulating the DS version, but there's two other remake, or no, sorry, there's a port and a remake of it, or at least I think it's a remake, of it's called Final Mix on the Switch. And yeah, I know I probably sound like I'm going in like 50 different areas, but it's because, well, I've kind of lost my train of thought when the door got opened. So, um, basically, an interesting idea I've been throwing around is doing episodes like this for the channel, you know, comparing. I mean, I know that there's already one channel, I think it's Exo Paradigm, who does remake versus rebreak, right? You know, if, if one can, you know, if a remake can be better, if, you know, if a remake outdoes the original, but what I want to know. Can a remake completely replace it? You know, like say, you know, I, I guess the I guess the best way to put it is, well, I think I actually already worded it best earlier. You know, it's like, uh, can a remake, can, basically, can a remake be so good to the point where it completely just wipes the original off the map? You know, because I know, um, you know, I know that there's some people you know who prefer the original Metroid over Zero Mission and vice versa. So. I guess now that I've finally got my point across after like five minutes of trying, uh, mainly because I don't know how to word things for crap, um, I'd like your guys' thoughts on it. So we're, we're going to try something uh, here. So that... And uh, I'm going to have you guys each give your guys' thoughts on it this time. So we're going to start with Liam first. Uh, Liam, are you alive? Liam? Yeah, these are some very oh, popular Liam. Indians. Liam, as, 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 the, as, the, as the relative retro gamer among us here, I, I think Liam might have died. Uh, okay, Phantom... No, I definitely heard him before. Yeah. 
All right, so um, I I don't I don't think they can completely replace the original because I feel like no matter what the original will, will always have like some kind of charm to it that usually isn't there for the remake. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think I know what you mean actually on that. Like one. uh, it's like it's like you know like maybe, maybe the remake can have a lot of improvements, especially graphically and you know like improved mechanics. But you know like especially people who who were like. Nostalgic for the original one, they like they'll, they'll pro still probably have a soft spot for the original one and play it, you know, along with the remake. So I, I don't think it can completely uh, replace the originals in that regard. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. All right, Miss Freddy's. Uh, I think the same. Like a remake can really can really challenge the original. It can improve some stuff, and it's acceptable and and grateful. But I think the the spice the Bye. The thing of the arena can be can be changed or can be obtained in a remake. Okay. Terry? Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, wasn't that mine? Was that yeah, my yeah, name? Yeah, that, that's you. You're up. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, Mike just cut out, so I didn't know if that was my name or not. Ah, sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's so much for a new mic. <laughs> <laughs> We're also getting uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with everyone else here, especially if the the game you're trying to remake is over the like fan favorite. That's a that's a high bar, I have to say. Yeah. Because if it's like a if it's like a cult classic, then you have to try really hard to make every single point work. You have to like increase the the graphics, the controls, the mechanics, even the music, maybe. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's my opinion. It's my opinion. If you want to replace a game entirely, you need to try. You need to try your your your, your best. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Yeah. You, you, if you give ninety nine percent, it's not gonna work. It needs to be a full one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Am you're up. Well, as far as remakes, the original is always considered, you know, special. It's the classic. Because it's the original way that the game was made. It was the original artist's intent. I say artist, but, you know, Designers. game and the story design is art. Mm -hmm. That's the way they originally intended the game to be played. Although sometimes they, it was like they didn't have enough time and some of the stuff got had bugs and things. And I think remakes are really good at fixing those things. But, like, you think about, like, Mario 64, they have a remake. But the thing is, in the original, a lot of people use these hack tactics, like, um, I think it's called BLJ. Yeah, backwards long jump. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. can get through doors that way and stuff, and there's, whole speed, there's a whole speedrun community just for that game. And so, when you have the new one with all that stuff fixed, it's actually not the same game anymore because you can't do those things. I actually never thought of it that way, because um, a few of my favorite games, like, you know... A couple games I actually wanted to throw out that I'm surprised no one's actually brought up yet. I mean, I know Pokemon was thrown around, but not the one that I was about to talk about. Is I've been a Pokemon fan since I was a little kid, right? And Liam knows this about me, but you know, I, I'm a proud owner of a Game Boy Advance, and I've grown up with one since I was little. And I've gotten to play both the original Pokemon Blue and Red, thanks to the 3DS. Like, Blue on the Game Boy, Red on the 3DS, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And I've also played fire red and what M said actually kind of makes a lot of sense because well fire red whenever you actually stop and actually look at the two games not only are they graphically different blue and red like going back to them now for me is next to impossible because of just how difficult they are compared to fire red like and keep on you know i i'm you know i i may play smash Bros. competitively or at least used to but I am by no means a competitive Pokemon person, you know. I, I play, you know, just for the hell of it, you know. Like, these are just games that I grew up with, you know, and I, I cherish, you know, and all that. And I used to be hella good at Pokemon Blue, you know. Like, you know, I knew, like, all the crazy strats and stuff, you know. Um, I even had a freaking Mew, thanks to my older brother. But I go back I, now, and I can't oh, even get past oh. the second gym. <laughs> also, there's the glitches in Pokemon. Like, there's oh, yeah. number one. Uh, miss, you mean missing no? Yeah, missing number. Um, isn't there some glitch to get Mew? Yeah, that's that's how I had a Mew. Is my brother did the glitch for me, and actually they kept the glitch in. I or no, they kept missing no. I think. But that's in. like, like 
for the original Pokemon games, that's like a thing that people know about, and it's like it's almost become a part of the series. It is actually, yeah, in a way it has, because I think Missing No is actually even in so like AR code. So when you fix too. that in a new one, it almost takes away from it because it. Yeah, that's it's like it's the glitch that everyone did as a kid. Yeah, that that's actually kind of why you know, uh, I actually am here actually owns a copy of the you know the 3D All Stars game, the Mario one, and. I have to say, I spent most of my time aimlessly wandering around in Al Delfino, just rediscovering old glitches and stuff that I used to do as a kid. You know, like, uh, you know, just like that one where you know you can fall through the fall through the the world and everything, you know, and use it to reach stupid areas kind of easily and all that. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I think at this point, it just kind of just depends on really the game at this point, you know, because there's there's games, you know, where it's like, you know, it's like the story of seasons one I mentioned before, you know, it's like some people are thinking, you know, it's like ah, it's at best, you know, I I I freaking love it to death, you know. And then, you know, you've got your, you've got your, like, your zero missions, you know, which almost fully replace the game, you know, but not quite, you know? I think it only replaces the game if you're someone who is new to the series and you don't like the glitches. Yeah, or... And you want better yeah, graphics, yeah. because it's not something Or just sometimes the improvement, so you too, you know? Like, that's the reason yeah. why I struggle to go back to the original Blaster Masters, just because Zero... Blaster Master Zero just does so much stuff better, you know? Like, it's... Like, you know, like, I, I played Blaster Master before again, like, I just, like, a few actual seconds of gameplay, and I just, like, you know, it's like, eh, this just isn't the same, you know? So I guess, I guess it really does depend on where you begin, you know? Alright, let's see, so, I think, I think we've got enough time for, like, maybe one more topic, because we're hit, we've actually already hit our 36 minutes, or we're at 36 minutes, and, Ooh. um, wow. our final thing that we have on our list of topics is and this this one I, I threw in specifically for Terry over here. <laughs> favorite oh. video game favorite soundtracks. Video game. Oh, I'm gonna yes. let Terry go first. I'll go last this time. Yada yada. So we can kind of get through this quickly. Terry, you're oh. up. Well, the figures. I've over I'm over the head of you because like like a few weeks ago, no, like a like few months ago, I made a topsters about my about my ten favorite the. Uh, Video game soundtracks is gonna put them here. That I could have in the group chat, I think. Yeah. If I think well, right. I don't, I can't yeah. see the group chat, but so what oh, he's got well, here well, is he's right, got go. he's got Val I've Ribbon, got... Undertale, Doki Doki. Of course, he's got PDLC. Hey, hey, just, hey, but... hey, hey! I see that Sonic Adventure two there. Yeah, I I, I, I tried to limit myself to one, one per series. That proved a, that proved a. A challenge with the Sonic game because, like, I like all of the Sonic soundtracks, like the new metal uh, vibe of Sonic uh, Forces, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then like the like the jazzy like uh, street performance style of Unleashed, and like the new era the techno vibes of Many a Plus. Oh yeah. It was hard to pick just. It was hard to pick just one, but I chose Adventure 2 because it's probably, like, the one that hits, like, the closest yeah. to me, like, music-wise. Uh, yeah, Adventure 2, we, uh, I'm, uh, I may actually have you hop in on the, um, the Adventure 2 one then. All right, Liam, are you here now? <laughs> okay, I don't think Liam is actually here with us. Teo, are you here? Liam died. Okay, I'm Sorry, what? You have been spacing out this entire time. <laughs> Man. Okay, so you, you, now that we finally got Teo's attention, we, we're going to give him a little bit of screen time. Yeah, Teo. you haven't been calling my name since fucking out of nowhere. Yeah, you, you've Teo, just been all, favorite you've just been video like, game soundtrack. Oh, God, game. You've just been like all in this entire interview. Yeah, no, interview Teo, podcast. Teo, favorite that's video game that, soundtrack, go. Favorite? Oh, <laughs> 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 nice. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. Oh, my goodness. Favorite video game soundtrack. Go. That is a hard question to answer. One, because a lot of games have really great music that I'm really big on. And two, I'm not really all that critical of game soundtracks to begin with. Like, I just, I just go along with it. Like, music isn't exactly the forefront um, during my experiences, usually. 
Yeah, that's fair. Knowing you, you're you're more into the game. Not to say that I won't listen to music tracks like just isolated by themselves, like um. Castlevania. Like I've been going through like Ritual of the Night soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Mithridates, you're up next. It's a hard one to be honest, but if I had to say I will stay with free right now. What will be the soundtrack of Modern Warfare 2? Hans Zimmerman is just a monster when doing soundtracks, and that's a fact we all know. The second one I will stay with the uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, the original one of 2005. Not the, not the crappy copy of 2012. That music was the, ve the best when you were to hear. And about the third, I will stay with Honkai Impact Free of Mihoyo because, not gonna lie, every time I hear that music, it's just like Rubia. a, a, hit, in the, a the hit of emotions in the face. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, hey, hey, Mithridius, screw you for yes. getting me into Honkai. I've already cried twice, and I'm like only linked the third chapter. <laughs> Gee, thanks. You're welcome. Alright, Phantom, you're up. This is gonna be fun. All right. Yeah, as as many of you guys said, it's very hard to ch choose one in particular, but uh, I think I'll have to go with Undertale. It's just um, it's like all the all the tracks are just they fit very very well for the situation, you know. Like like the battle theme, it's like a generic generic battle, and you know it fits. And then like uh, when you kill all the enemies, it becomes like genocide. It, it becomes eerie and creepy, and 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 you know, you, you, you get to feel like like. Like scared and stuff. I was like, "Oh no!" Because I remember the first time I was playing it. Like, I I thought this was gonna be a usual RPG. So then, when it, when that happened, I was actually like, "Oh, did I do something wrong? What the hell?" <laughs> and it was uh, man, it was scary. And um, Megalovania and just, being, uh, its own, being its own genre of music at this point. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like drone. <laughs> Me Megalovania, just, it, 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 it's just its own genre at this point. We can all agree on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> uh, 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 honest, honestly, yeah, I, I would be okay with that. I would be okay with that. Megalovania is being its yeah, own Megal genre. Imagine if Megalovania became number one on the music charts. <laughs> that would have been lit. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah no, 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 awesome. Knowing how that works, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Right, guys, like, next uh, up, guys, next up you, is you, uh, um, two words Super Mario. I guess that's three words. Super Mario Galaxy. I mean, Nintendo came along and was like, okay, we want an awesome orchestra for this beautiful space scene. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we can do that. Let's go get some computer sounds. No, 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 no. We need a full freaking orchestra for this thing. A real orchestra to play these songs. And it was bomb. The end. <laughs> Okay, now we're here to be, and this is actually going to be a hard one, because unlike Tail, music is actually kind of a big part of games to me, just because, you know, it's it's mostly what I like to remember, typically, you know, especially from my childhood and all that. I'd have to say, surprisingly, despite the fact that, you know, it is one of the soundtracks that's most nostalgic to me, my answer is for once not going to be Adventure 2. I'm actually going to mix things up, oh. and I'm going to say... I'd have, I'd have to say that mine is actually kind of a tie between... Persona 5, like the original, you know, yeah. and freaking um, uh, Three Houses, you know, Fire Emblem. That's what I was about to guess was Three Houses. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, my, I, my answer. I, mean, I would say games, true, but... because Three Houses yeah. soundtrack is really good. I, kind of, I, I like game. it to, like to, to begin to end. I think it's like, it's a tie in the matter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard much Three Houses, but I know Persona 5's soundtrack is phenomenal, yeah. definitely. The reason like, why I my top five. Five. I heard Base of well... Persona 5 and it's good, but if I have to choose between that and Three Houses, I will stay with Three Houses. Yeah. In that matter. The reason why I'm choosing both of them is because these are actually two games that have actually genuinely been life changing for me in kind of ways. Um, you know, both with their music and just, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, I'm a very. I wouldn't exactly call myself Fire Emblem YouTuber, sadly. Because I have no way of actually recording my gameplay and all of that, but Fire Emblem Three Houses is a game that really changed me in a few ways I never expected it to. You know, it was it's a, it's been a very very big inspiration for both my own writing and uh, you know Claude. You know, I I'm a loud and proud Golden Deer. I have the pin. I've got the jacket. You know, I have bookmarks of Claude for Pete's sake that I use that I bought off of Etsy. You know, to use because you know and. Being, being a part of the Three Houses fandom, you know, like, I actually consider myself to be part of the Fire Emblem fandom, you know, and I do actually... Don't tell do, me you have a shrine of it. Yeah, I actually do want to do uh, Three Houses content here on the channel someday, 
but three houses is three houses is soundtrack you know i i have to admit the first time i heard god shattering star my jaw literally freaking dropped to the floor i was like what the heck Never you're, ever, you're, never did I ever expect to hear freaking rock opera, pretty much, in my Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, with Persona, you know, Persona is just a game that's, that's very, very special to me because it was my entire reason for buying a PlayStation 3, and it is currently the only steelbook I own for any video game is I own a copy of uh, Persona 5 Royal, and here got it for me as a gift, and uh, it is, to this day, the only steel steelbook game I own, but... It's soundtrack specifically for the original Persona. It was basically my driving force behind meeting Joker and Smash Bros. And, um, you know, actually going through the trouble of finding a way to get my hands on the PS3. You know, just, you know, last surprise, you know, freaking life will change. You know, Beneath the Mask <laughs> is a song that I listen to. Rivers in the later, Desert. You know, like, like. Phantom will know, you know, he, he knows my struggle with, with trying to get a hold of Persona 5, you know, where I, I tried for, like, years to get my hands on that game. Yeah. And I finally got my hands on it, and I still have Strikers, you know, I mean, you know, I, I can't really, I don't own a PS3 or PS4 right now. I'm hoping to get a PS4. Man, I, still, still need to finish, I still need to finish Strikers, man. It's, it's oh, yeah, same. I, I'm still in the second thing, but that's just because, again, I'm going painfully slow because I'm, like, grinding everything out at the moment. Um, but, yeah. yeah. But Persona and Fire Emblem are... Their soundtracks, you know, especially, you know, you, you know, just, you can just constantly hear me humming, um, you know, uh, Edge of Dawn, you know, just constantly. It's just a song that I just really, really, in, I really just enjoy listening to. And I love that song. That became my favorite song for so long. I listen to it every day. And I don't even play Fire Emblem, really. I have yeah. three houses. I haven't touched it that much. You still need to beat it, even yeah, though, you know, because I, 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 I just, I love that one song. I can't get enough of it. It never gets old. I'm also Especially gonna... on Kazoo. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Zasia, if you ever if you oh, ever send out CJ, Alright. I wanna show it one last music soundtrack. I don't know if anyone else here other than maybe Tail has heard it, but um Fire Emblem Awakening. Um let's just say there's one song from it named Conquest. That is basically my work song. You know, if I'm doing chores, you know, or if I'm just relaxing, you know, just typing up stuff or working on the Yammer videos, that's what I listen to. Conquest from Fire Emblem Awakening. Just a little bit of an honorable mention. Yeah, right. mind, if I throw, mind if I throw in an honorable mention as well? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm, I'm turning this as an honorable mention because half of it is songs from an actual band's discography, but the music from the Steam World Heist album by Steam Powered Giraffe. Wait, Steam World Heist? Know, yeah, Steam, like yeah, Steam World Heist. Like the 3DS game? The I may Switch have to game. give that game another shot. I tried it, but I didn't really care for it. But yeah, because half of the, because that, the album is entirely done by an actual steampunk band called Steam Powered Giraffe. Nice. And I've listened to their, I've listened to their full discography. And a uh, fun fact, Steam Powered Giraffe was the reason I actually started playing Steam World Heist, because I saw <laughs> that they did uh, an <laughs> OST for a game, where I was like, I have to get that. Yeah, see, and I, I, did I, it. I, I, I tried that the game, game only because I heard that it had Fire Emblem support, and I have... Like a bunch of Fire Emblem amiibo, because you can you can ask you can ask the two people in this in this chat here who who know me in real life, which is Tao and M. I'm kind of an amiibo hoarder. Okay, well not really, but I've I've got like a bunch of them. So I have like five. I have at least ten, and that number is going <laughs> to grow because I plan on buying the Byleth amiibo. Because yes. All right. So unfortunately, it appears that we have now hit our time limit. We have actually hit. 50 minutes, or about there. No, that's perfect, no. actually. It's exactly where one hit. So, um, yeah. So, we plan on doing this uh, next next Tuesday as well, assuming I do not run out of voice again like I did last week. Um, if, 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 if I run out of voice again, or if I just feel like it, I might upload another Toho thing, uh, because why not? I, I, I need to redeem myself after my subpar gameplay from last week. Um, there's going to be an Emma video coming on Tuesday. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And um, anyways, again, I hope I hope everyone who's you know both been a part of this little podcast, as well as those of you who are watching, enjoyed the show, or enjoyed it. Um, and we'll see you guys hopefully again sometime soon. Everyone, please take care.